So we're doing some basic validation on these fields and we've seen how we can extend this. But what we're not doing is we're not interacting with our database in any way. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build in functionality that allows us to check the uniqueness of a username and an email. Now I'm going to leave this quite open because you may have your own database wrapper that you might want to pass in to the validation class as a dependency but for the sake of this video we're going to build a basic database wrapper that we can use here and you can go ahead and use that for your own purpose if you need to so let's start to look at what we need to do we obviously need to extend our validator as we have already done we need to add an additional rule we need to add another message but let's create this database wrapper just so we can pass this in and we know that we can use this so i'm going to call this class date uh, this class database and i'm going to store that as database.php so what we're going to need to do now is uh, inject it as a dependency into our validator so just up here let's require this in and let's instantiate this down here it doesn't take any arguments uh, we'll be hard coding all of the login inf uh, the mysql server uh, login information inside of the class you can pull that from your configuration or whatever and we're going to pass this as a dependency first into validator so we need to modify the validator class because that takes a new dependency now and that is a database so we'll type hint it and we'll call this variable db so we're going to say this db and we're going to assign that the value that's passed in and we'll create a property up here to store that so within our validator we now have access to whatever functionality is within our database if you have your own database uh, wrapper that you've already created or you want to download a ready-made one just pass that in as I've done now and you can just use that straight off so you could probably uh, forward the video and skip the part where we actually create our own wrapper this is going to be fairly straightforward though so let's go ahead and start doing this so I'm going to store a few values here so things like the host, the database that we're going to be using, that's website. I already have this um, created, so let's log into MySQL and look at this. And let's use the website database. And if we show all tables, you can see that we've got a users table. And let's just describe that. So you can see that I've created this already. We've got an ID, a username, an email, and a password. And uh, I think I have a test record in there already. There we are. So we can use this information uh, already. You know, this is going to be different to yours. So we have the database's website. We obviously need to connect with a username. And in this case, uh, for me, it's root. And the password, this is just nothing for me. So we also need to store a few things that allow us to store statements um, and we also need to store which table we're working on. We're going to change some methods here and we're also going to create this PDO object here which will be public uh, so we can access that um, wherever we want. Um, so basically what we need to do now is um, create a constructor. And this is basically going to set the PDO property we created up here to a new PDO object. Now this takes a string which tells you which driver you want to use. You can use MySQLi here if you want, uh, but we're using PDO just for flexibility. Um, so I'm going to connect to a MySQL uh, database. The host, we already know that's going to be this host. The database name, we already know, that's going to be this DB. And then after here, we have the login information. So this will be root. In this case, it will just be this username. And then this password. Cool. So let's just refresh our page here just to make sure nothing went wrong. And it did. So access denied. OK, so the password, I think, is root. There we are. So as long as you're connecting now, uh, you now have access to this PDO, um, instantiated PDO object. So let's create um, the ability to select a table. And I'm not going to go through this too much because uh, you might be using your own wrapper or you might just not 
really care about this wrapper, but we want to be able to set a table. Um, and this means that we can chain methods on. So we're going to say this table, and we're going to assign that the value that's passed in here. And then we're going to return the whole object. So this means that we can do something like, if we just go inside of index, we can do something like, um, let's say db table query. So we can do something like table users, and then we can do something like in here, select everything from whatever. Oh, well, that wouldn't really matter, but we can do something like insert here. So that's basically the idea behind this. Okay, so the next um, method we need to create is a basic query. So we're gonna say, uh, this is gonna take an SQL string. And all we're gonna do here is we're gonna return this PDO query SQL, that's it. Uh, in fact, I don't actually think we need this, to be honest. Um, the way that we're working with things, we probably don't need this. So let's leave this one out. What we are going to do, though, is we're going to create a exists method. And that's going to be used inside of our validator. So we're going to say exists. And this is basically going to take some data. And this data is going to look something like this. Username Alex. And that's going to return true or false. Uh, whether this actually exists or not. So what we need to do here is we need to be able to actually uh, create a where um, operation. So let's create a method here called where. And this is going to take a field, an operator, and a value. So this is going to be something, this is going to be called like this, db where username. equals Alex. So that's how we're going to call this. Um, and this exists method will use where it's just basically cutting things up. So we're not doing too much in each um, in each method. And we're also going to have a count method as well, which is going to return the count of the last statement executed. So let's fill in this where one now. Um, the SQL for this is basically just going to be and we'll put this in double quotes, it's going to be select everything from and then we have the table name this table remember we're setting the table here and then we're able to chain on where so uh, select um, everything from this table where now we already have the field the operator and the value so we're going to bind the value in a moment so we're going to say where field operator question mark now we're going to prepare this statement so this would ordinarily look something like this where username equals alex for example uh, but we're not doing that because we want to take security in into consideration so we are going to say this statement and we're going to set this to a prepared statement like this so that hasn't actually run the query but what we can then do is say this statement execute and we can pass in an array of values to replace the question marks so we're creating a prepared statement and we're executing this with this value here so where username as we saw in the example equals or doesn't equal or whatever value which is here which is uh, injected in when it's executed and then we're going to return this um, we're not going to be chaining anything. Uh, in fact, yeah, we are. We're going to be chaining count onto this within exists. So within exists, this is now fairly straightforward. We've got data which represents something like I said, username Alex. This is basically going to be passed into this uh, wherever we want to use it just for simplicity. We want to extract the field from this. Uh, and we do this by saying array keys on data. And then we get the first element. So that will just be username, for example, in the uh, example I just typed. Then we want to return this where field like we've just extracted equals data. So the data that we're getting here at that field 
then we're returning the count. Now, if the count is uh, positive, we return true from this. Otherwise, we return false. So the count is super simple. We just say return this stmt row count, so the last statement count. Uh, this isn't obviously perfect. You can add more to this, but that's basically our database wrapper. Hopefully that makes sense, uh, but if not, I'll just quickly run through it. We're connecting. We're giving the ability to select a table. So we can actually test this inside of index.php and just to make sure we've got everything working. So I'm going to do a var dump on this just to check that we get back true or false. So I'm going to say db table users exists username Alex. Now this should return true. So we're passing in this here. What that's then doing is, well, we're, we're selecting the table first here, obviously. And then what this is doing is it's taking the field, which is equal to username. It's running the where query, uh, the where method with username equals Alex, because that's picking up on the field we pass in here. And then that's returning a count. So where we'll do a select everything from this table where the field equals Alex. And it's return, um, basically paying that. And then the count's already stored. So we use the count on here. So let's check if this works. We should get false. Um, that's actually wrong. So let's just go back to our index page. Ah, oh, there we go. User name. So I spelt the uh, field name wrong. Okay, so when I refresh, we get a bool of true. If we would say username Billy, that's obviously going to be false because it doesn't exist in our record set. Okay, so now that we've got this functionality, we can scrap this example and we can actually start to build in the validation here. So we're already injecting our database as a dependency. Uh, we need to just go through the standard process now in order to allow for this uh, unique uh, operator or this unique rule. Um, so let's define this in here actually first. So I'm going to say unique users. Now what this means is, it means that I want this username to be unique to the user's uh, table. So this is the user table, username is the name of the field. The only downside to this method is that we can't explicitly define which um, column we want to use to check unique. So this name of this field must match. Um, but you know, you can go ahead and chop and change this. Now we also want the email to be unique to users as well. So we're checking for the uniqueness of a username and email, which is pretty uh, straightforward, standard. Okay, so inside of our validator, let's add this as a valid rule. And let's also add a message in here. So the message we want is going to be something like, that field is already taken. So this will be this username is already taken, this email is already taken. So down here, let's now create a new method. And we'll call this unique, obviously. So this is obviously going to take the field, the value and the satisfier. Remember, in this case, the satisfier is the table. So what we want to do here is we want to return this DB, much like we did on index just a moment ago as an example. And we're going to say exists. So within exists, uh, oh, sorry, table first. So the table is the satisfier. Now when we choose exists, when we pass in an array with a field and a value, the field and the value we know are provided to us here. So we just say field and value. That's it, straightforward. So now what this is gonna do is it's gonna return true if the user does exist. But we want to negate this because if the user does exist, that's a false check. We're going to say that's wrong. So we just add an exclamation mark here. So now what we're going to do is test this out. So we know that we've got a username called Alex. When I hit this, um, it obviously doesn't do anything because this is passing through an empty value. Uh, you could, of course, in here, check somewhere if this string is empty, don't do this check. Um, the same with the match one, actually. But, you know, for now, we'll just leave it. So let's type in Alex, Alex, like that. And let's enter a password that matches just for the sake of it. When I hit submit, 
that username is already taken and that email is already taken. Uh, let's enter one that doesn't exist, but an email that does exist. And we get that email is taken. And let's enter something that doesn't exist altogether. And there we go. It works.